we associate good hearing with having big ears, this outside bit here, because you know, a really big ear helps you collect the sound. But this is a tawny owl, and the tawny owl's also got really good hearing, but it hasn't got any big ears, except that it has, it's just they're harder to see. If you look at this shape here, there's a rigid set of feathers going around that heart-shaped bit on the owl's face, and inside here, these feathers are all really soft. So these are the owl's ears. They're two big sort of cups, but instead of being on the outside of its head, they're back around its eyes. And when sound comes towards the owl, it, these big ears that are made out of feathers will direct the sound down. I think about the physical environment that these animals are living in. So imagine this owl on a dark night, and there's no light, so it can't see very well but all around it there is sound. There are sound waves travelling past it. There might be some sound waves from a local road. There might be some sound waves from scuttling beetles. And there might be some sound waves that come from something like a vole, a little mammal that's scooting round in the grass. And a little mammal doesn't push very much on the air as it moves. It doesn't make very much sound. But in the owl's environment, those little sounds will be drifting past it from lots of different directions. So imagine this owl with these sound waves coming at it from different directions. And somehow, it's got to find dinner. And so it uses these parabolic reflectors to direct that sound into its inner ear. As the, if the vole's over here, the sound comes towards the owl. And only if the owl is looking right at the source of the sound will these ears hear the sound really loudly. And that's how the owl can localize the sound. It doesn't listen equally in all directions like we do. It listens in a very specific direction, and that's how it finds its dinner. This is the tawny owl's skull. It's the same bird. There's a lot of feathers on an owl. That's what I discovered the first time I held an owl, is that you can put your finger into these feathers quite a long way before you hit the skull. There's a lot of feathers around here. So this is the owl's skull. This is what's inside. And you can see something else here about the way it senses the world, which is these eye sockets here. They're enormous. They're so big that they almost touch. There's only the thinnest bit of bone in between the two. And that's to help give the owl really good nighttime vision. The bigger its eye is, the more light it can collect. So if it's really dim and there's only a tiny bit of light around, it's got these big eyes that will help it collect that light. But they're as big as they can physically be inside this skull. Just look at that. If they were any bigger, they'd be touching in the middle.